Hello everyone, this is Hoda Ganji and today we are going to talk about tessellation in Dynamo in Revit. Uh, tessellation is a very uh, interesting way to create different facades actually in Dynamo. I'm going to open a new project. We can go with uh, architectural or metric. Okay. I want to go to the units, type UN and I would rather change this to meters and three decimal places to work better with Dynamo. I'm going to open Dynamo and I'm going to open a new project. Under Geometry, at the very end of the menu, we have an option for tessellation. Uh, under tessellation, we have an item uh, named as Delani. We're going to work on that one, which is relatively simple. Uh, so let's go with uh, by parameters on surface. That means first we're going to need a surface. I'm going to consider that this is going to be like a facade design. So maybe I could draw one rectangle. You know, if you right click on the canvas, you can just directly type uh, the command that you are looking for. I'm going to go with rectangle. Uh, plane width and length that's good uh, I can go with either X and Z plane or Y Z plane if I want to go with one vertical surface that goes to plane uh, let's say maybe this is going to be like 5 by 5 or something or you can assign different values to uh, width and length I can hide the plane and I need the surface, but this is just a curve. So how about I patch the curve to have a surface? So this is the surface of the wall. Uh, how about I group this? I'm going to name this as wall surface. Uh, and that will go to the face eventually. Face is the same thing as surface. If you hover the mouse around here, you see that it's going to need a surface to do the triangulate. Then we're going to need UVs of that surface, right? So if you go to geometry, if you go to surface, surfaces, surface, uh, I'm going to find an option which will give us the UVs on one surface. That's actually uh, this one, it says UV parameter at point, and if I hover the mouse around here, it says that it's going to return the UV parameter of the input point of a related surface. This seems good. I'm going to connect surface to surface, and the surface is going to go to UV. Nothing happens yet because we have not assigned any points to the UV yet. And again, that point needs to be embedded within that surface. So I'm going to go with point at parameter on the surface, right? Uh, because in this case, I can also fit the points on the surface. So surface is going to be connected here too. Point is going to go there. And, and we still need to assign some values to U and V. In this case, I'm going to assign a random set of numbers to U and V. So it's going to create some points all over the surface. And you see for now we have one little point over there. As soon as I assign different values to U and V, it's going to create more points on this surface. So how about I go with a random list of numbers, not this one. I'm going to type random, random list. I need to assign a value to amount. So how about I go with uh, one slider or maybe integer slider. Let's see, it goes from zero, let's start from 10 to 100, that goes to amount, and now we have 10 different values here that can be assigned to you, and you see we have random values for you. If we assign the same value to V, it's going to create actually one line, one diagonal line, right? But notice what happens if I copy and paste this note here. Now you, you see that although both of them are connected to the same integer slider, each of them 
has different random values, right? For instance, the first one is here is 0.33, here is 0.27. So if that goes to my V, it's going to create lots of um, actually points on the uh, surface. And the reason the points are embedded or actually are within the borders of the surface is, is that we use the node surface.pointAtParameter. Now if I move to the right, now it's going to create a hundred points for us, right? You can go with more if you want. I, as soon as I connect this to point, uh, it's going to create uh, this pattern on the surface. So uh, let's make here a little bit organized. Okay, so you notice that we assign the same uh, surface component to our uh, Delony surface dot uv parameter at point and surface dot point at parameter. Okay, so I'm gonna group these items. There we go. Okay, so now I can like hide the surface. I don't need the surface. Turn the preview off. I don't even need the rectangle anymore. Turn the preview off. And uh, now that we have this, it's just curves. We can extrude curves. Uh, maybe using distance. How about I extrude them by like 0.2? That goes there, this goes there. Now you see they are actually extruded as just surfaces. Uh, if you think it's too much, you can change that to like 0.15 and that means that it's going to be extruded by 15 centimeters because the units in a Revit file is set to meters. Now, how about I also thicken the surface? So I'm going to type thicken. Let's assign like um, maybe 20 centimeters to the thickness that goes there. Uh, maybe this is too much, I'll go with only 0.1 or 10 centimeters and this is now my um, facade pattern. Okay. So we have different uh, values here, how about I put this up there? Uh, and you can turn some of these nodes off, turn the preview off for instance I can uh, Turn this one off, this one, and the rest is good. Okay, uh, so now you can work with different parameters. If you change the size, it's going to uh, change it automatically. Uh, I can change it back to like maybe 6 meters. You can go with different values for width and length. You can assign different values. Uh, to the number of points. So if you have only like 10 points, it's going to be kind of a very simple one. But if we, wa if we want to have kind of a dense pattern, we can go with 100, uh, even like 150 or something. And it's going to create a more uh, complicated pattern. I guess somewhere around like 75 should be good in this case. And by the end, you see we have uh, 400 options, actually 400 elements, and that's just too much. So I want to go with union. There is an option which says by union, and it's going to turn all the solids into one solid. So when we're going to import this into Revit, it's not going to be that much heavy. So that 403 solids became only one. Now I can use import by geometry actually no spaces in between. Import by geometry or geometries. In this case, it doesn't matter. Uh, I can just use this. And then if I go back to my Revit, you see that it's also exported here. You can select it. You can go to Object Styles under Manage. Go to Imported Object and you can assign material from here. You can go with Chrome or Steel or anything else. How about I just sign still because I guess we already have it here. Okay. And uh, you can change this to like shaded. Okay. So uh, this is going to be 
the output, right? If you want to make changes in Revit later, instead of going by solid by union and import by geometries, you can go with import by uh, geometry. And if you assign this to that, let me just decrease the values here, maybe to only 30 or 50. So it's not too many objects. And now it's 262. I want to assign this to that. This time, if you go to Revit, it's going to create actually 262 items. And uh, this is useful if you want to delete some of the items later for some reason uh, in Revit. Actually, I need to put this on manual. So it's going to allow me to make changes here. So you can put this on manual after you do the import. And now I can delete different parts if I don't want them here. Uh, and it's going to actually delete them. Uh, but now in this case, if you want to assign materials, if you go to object stars, there are too many items here and you need to hit the plus and assign the material here. So if you don't need to make any changes, it's going to be much easier if you go with the first method, uh, solids by union and import by geometry.